like I don't want to get so focused on you know I shouldn't like be willing to sacrifice my my morality which I, I wasn't really doing but I, I I saw it coming to that I, okay but I don't want to sacrifice my morality for for some views on YouTube you know but I guess the big question is am I gonna continue to make videos We just hit 500. I made a promise to myself that once we reach 500 subscribers, I was going to make this video. And um, today's the day. I, before I start, I just want to say how thankful I am because, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Just thank you for everything, especially for praying the rosary with me. That means the most. And um, I'm just so thankful, but, you know, I wasn't always making videos praying the rosary, obviously. I wasn't even always praying the rosary at all. I wasn't even... To go over my faith journey, we have to go back to when I was a really little kid, because that's kind of where it starts. So I was baptized Catholic and raised Catholic for the first few years of my life. Well, when I say first few, I mean first few. I remember going to church, to Catholic church, but at the time, since I was four, two, three, four years old, I don't remember any of the Catholic things. I just remember, oh, this is church and I have to sit here for an hour or else my mom will get mad. <laughs> but uh, around, I think I was five or six years old, I can't really remember exactly, but um, my parents went through a divorce. And um, I think there was two main, two darkest times in my life, like two main ones, and that was one of them. So I remember, since I was, a, I was like five or six years old, so I had no understanding of what was happening at all. And I was, I just remember being so sad. I remember crying for literally hours because I didn't know where, you know, what happened to my dad. He doesn't, you know, he wasn't there anymore. Yeah, that was really hard, especially for a, a little, a little preschooler. And uh, shortly before that, I don't know how much I want to say. I, I won't say it, it in complete detail because um, it's probably not a good idea. But 
I do want to share, I want to be real with you, just to give you an understanding a little bit. I, I think it'll help, but um, I will say this. My biological father was abusive and manipulative, and um, I won't go into the details of that because it's not really good, but he convinced my mom to step away from the church shortly before the divorce. So after the divorce, um, it was not very good um, because we lost the faith essentially. And um, we didn't go to church for a while. I just I don't remember going to church um, at all, but um, eventually we started going back. But when we started going back to church, it was Protestant churches. Um, I remember one church we stayed on for a long time because we liked it a lot. It got to the point where, well, before I go into that, I want to say that um, even though we weren't Catholic, my mom still knew lots of the Catholic stuff. So she would teach us like the meal prayer, the uh, bless us, O Lord prayer. Like we knew I that's I've just known that forever. Yeah, we still knew the Bible stories. I don't really like calling them stories because they're I mean, really historical events, but we knew him pretty well, like pretty well, especially Moses. Every, I remember every time me and my brother, we we're in the thing for kids. Like, I don't know what to call it. Like, I don't know what they call it. Every time they would ask a question, because I think there was one time where Moses, the Moses story was the topic, right? And every single question they asked, we would just both shoot our hands way up, right? And we'd know the answer. And then they had to tell us, you know, stop raising your hand because we need the other kids to answer. Um, so yeah, we knew Moses really well, um, and we knew uh, some of the other Old Testament um, ones as well. It eventually got to the point, and this is around, this is like, I think I'm in, still in elementary school, kind of late elementary though, I think. Me and my brother, like, didn't, like, like the, the kids group wasn't enough. Like, they didn't, weren't teaching us, like, we had a, we, we both had a, like, a, like we knew there was more to God than what they were saying, okay. So we could we asked our mom to go to the adult, um, the adult one, and um, she let us come to the uh, the adult group with the main pastor there, and um, it was like yes, finally, we actually are learning stuff. But then it got to the point where we started noticing that the pastor was repeating the same things. I remember he would repeat stuff because they'd get a lot of new people in that has never heard that. So he has to kind of repeat the same ones so that they get the message too. So do you understand? So I, I get it, but I mean, for where we were spiritually, it wasn't working because we just kept hearing the same things over and over and over. And we knew that there was more, there was more than just stay faithful. You know, there's more than just that, you know? There's something, you know, there's something more than that. So then we left that church eventually. All of us kind of were feeling the same thing, like we just needed something more. And uh, we started church hopping. So we tried this Protestant church, tried a different Protestant church, and we just kept going back and forth. And then we eventually got to the point where we just stopped going to church entirely. And um, that was when I was in middle school, I'm pretty sure. And um, that was the second darkest time in my life because I don't know I don't know I just wasn't very good got into some stuff I probably shouldn't have got into definitely shouldn't have that's when my de anxiety developed depression as well there's also a phase where I was actually suicidal because I because of the depression and um but thank god for my sister because she has anxiety and depression as well so she understood right and she would help me get through that that was probably spiritually probably my lowest point in my life, I'd say. I just wasn't in a good place. I remember I had this Catholic friend and um you I don't I was I got so mad at this kid. I don't know why, but I got so mad at him and I I told him that I told him it was going to hell. And he said, Why am I going to go to hell? I said, Because you're Catholic.
So I wasn't really, wasn't at all Catholic at that point. I just I didn't act like it at all. But um, I think the best, one of the best things my mom has done for me and my brother is um, take us out of the out of the physical school because both of us are having issues. I'm not gonna talk about my brother, but I had the kind of personality where, as far as my peers, I didn't want to look bad or make people feel bad to the point where I could be taken advantage of. And if I wasn't careful, I could have gotten to some bad stuff, but thank God I didn't. And so our mom took us out and uh, we started going to an online school instead and that was the best thing. People who don't know about homeschool or online school, they, they didn't really know about the physical school either, it seems like, because they, I know a lot of people say, well, what about the social aspect of it, right? You're not socializing with other kids, right? I was so anti-social in the middle school because of the kids. Especially these days, kids can say some evil stuff and do evil things, like evil things. Not a joke. Being taken away from that, being physically removed from that, has made me open up a lot more and now you know I will socialize with people I there was a time in my middle school life that I didn't even want to talk to my mom I, I didn't want to talk to her about anything and uh, she, she would try to you know take me to the store or something just to talk to me you know I wouldn't talk to her now it's a lot better it's just a really evil place man I'm, I'm serious it's just horrible at least it was for me. I think it is for every kid, honestly. We're taken out of the school, right? Started going to online school. And at around the same time, we became Lutheran. We're getting a little closer, but um, I still had almost like a hole. Like, I knew there's some, we're missing something. Like, both me and my brother had that same thing. Me and my brother are really, really close. We eventually uh, stopped going to that church because I, both me and my brother didn't like it very much. But then, one day, my mom and my sister were driving. I forget where they were going or coming from or what. But my sister asked to go to, we live in Minnesota, always have lived in Minnesota. But um, she wanted to go to the Basilica in Minneapolis. And my mom was like, what? Like, like why would you want to go there? You know? Um, but my, because my sister, she was raised Catholic. She even went to a Catholic school. She was, she's six years older than me. So, she remembered all the stuff, right? So she wanted to go light a candle, okay, at the Basilica, because they, you know, and uh, so they went, lit a candle. Then she asked my mom if I would want to go. And my mom was like, what? what is, where is this coming from, right? So then she, then they eventually come back, get me and my brother, and take us there. And this is where I think I've found the faith. Because... I went in this church. I was like, man, a church, man. You know, I, 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 I was, I just didn't want to go. And, um, but I went in there and it was the most, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Cause I haven't been in a big Catholic church in my life. Well, maybe I have, but I don't remember. So I, I just remember seeing, oh, it was just so beautiful. And I saw the statue of the saints. I had no idea who they were. Okay. Then I saw in this on the side there's a statue of Jesus. And instantly, there was no like, oh, I'm not gonna worship this statue. There's none of that. I all I saw was Jesus. I didn't see a statue, I didn't see anything else. I just saw Jesus and a kneeler. So I went over there and knelt before before Jesus Christ I remember just crying and praying I forget what I was praying about I didn't see a statue I didn't see you know I didn't, I didn't have that you know the typical Protestant things or you know I just saw Jesus saying come And, uh, uh, 
but we left different. Okay, at least I did. I think we all did. Cause then we be a, we came back to the faith, and uh, we started going to a Catholic church. We were going to this church. We went to our uh, the confirmation uh, thing, and uh, we got confirmed. I think the church got new pre I forget what, but they got new priests or something. And we ended up going to a different Catholic church, and we we're going to that one for so long. And that's when, again, my sister, man. My sister, she uh, said that we should go and start going to adoration and going, and then we, my brother, my mom, and me uh, started going to daily mass there when they'd have it. Cause sometimes they would have it, or we couldn't go, but we go as often as we could. And that's where I found this. Uh, that's where I found this cross, right? Um, at that church when we we're going to adoration and stuff. Started going to reconciliation as well every month. You know, uh, it was just getting so much better. The anxiety was still there. The, repress the depression was was gone. Um, but I still had anxiety attacks every once in a while. You know, but um, then COVID hit, right? And um, our church was shut down, man. We were so sad. We had to watch mass on the TV. Okay, and do it at home for the longest time, we couldn't go to adoration. I remember the last day I was in adoration, I was so sad, I was crying so much. In a way, I know that hurt a lot of people, but two things happened. One day, one of the priests came out and said they gave us communion. And we were so happy, so happy. And he, hand, he gave us communion, right? Put it in our hand, and we, and I, all three of us, me, my brother, and my mom, looked down. We saw particles on our hand because it was so sunny out. We were able to see it. It wasn't like it was in the church, right, where it's kind of dim. But so, and we all saw particles and we licked our hands. That moment, we realized that when you receive like that, there, Jesus is there still. A priest told me um, recently that we asked him about this and he said, there's a reason we call it bread crumbs, because we acknowledge that the crumbs are bread. If you can't acknowledge that the crumbs are bread, it's not bread. But because you can acknowledge that these crumbs are bread crumbs from the host, that's Jesus. That changed it. We asked the priest there, and we wanted to receive on the tongue, but they didn't allow it there because of the dang pandemic. And um, I'm not going to say what he said, but... We left that church. <laughs> um, also, during this whole craziness, I started praying, or my mom wanted to do the Our Lady of Nice devotion where you have to pray a decade of the rosary, right? Instead of praying a decade, she wanted to pray the whole thing, right? She'd have trouble, right? Because she's never prayed the rosary like that before in her life. And we have never, we don't even know what the rosary is. So she taught us, she got these pamphlet things and we learned how to pray the rosary. I thought it was what a waste of time. I'm not lying. But, um, she would need our help, so she'd call me and my brother in. And we'd be like, okay, fine. I don't know why you need help, but whatever, we'll just pray with you, right? And then it turned into a thing, eventually. Now, parents, if your kids don't pray the rosary, I'm a kid who didn't want to pray the rosary. And now I'm making videos on the rosary. If you keep pushing it, man, if you say, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you, and don't give in to their wallowing and Oh, I don't want to pray it. I want to do this. I don't. So you know, they don't give into that attitude at all. Cause my mom didn't. Praying with her turned into praying a rosary, a family rosary every day. I said, well, if I can pray one, right? Might as well pray two. I can pray one in the morning. So I started praying two. My brother started praying two. And then we started praying all three sets of mysteries. And once we started praying that rosary, it was like the veil was lifted. It was like we were blind and Jesus came and healed us so we could see again. I'm telling you, you have to pray the rosary. It's the sword. It's a sword to slay the devil. He even said, if the world knew the power of the rosary, you would already be defeated. 
and people don't do it. I understand not wanting to pray the rosary. Okay. Because I didn't want to for a time. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, please. That, the rosary is what took my anxiety. People who suffer from anxiety and depression, they wonder why they try to take medicine and all this stuff and get on medication have to pay thousands of dollars and stuff. But the real cure is free. And I know it's boring. It is boring. You're saying the same thing over and over and over and over, right? But if you decide, if you willingly decide to just say that boring prayer, it'll humble you and you will be able to see the rosary is the key. My old YouTube channel I had, I started around high school, I think. I don't remember really. It's been a long time. But uh, once we started um, going to adoration, like I said before, before they closed it, the Lord told me to delete that, man. I was playing all sorts of garbage on there, M-rated games, really violent games, sacrilegious games. Like, I was playing this horror game, this nun horror game. Garbage. I thought, oh, I'm going to delete it and never make one again. But then, you know, with the rosary, I was told to make, make it again, make a new one. But to pray, to promote the rosary to everybody watching. A lot of older people, you know, say video games are a waste of time. And if you really think about it, they kind of are. I mean, and I'm that's coming from someone who plays them and likes video games. They kind of are a waste of time. I mean, because it's a digital thing, it's not real. Older kids and teens, what the heck do they do? They play video games. How are you going to get them to do something they don't want to do? See, it's hard, especially for teenagers to get them to, 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 like, to pray the rosary. How are you supposed to get them to pray the rosary? If they don't want to do it with all their will, they don't want to. And they even say they won't. At least from my experience, there's a YouTuber I used to watch, okay? It's a Christian YouTuber. Now this is when I wasn't Catholic, so, or wasn't practicing. Um, I was in middle school and uh, when, I, when I found him. And um, I would watch his channel. He would pray before he ate. He'd call God his father. He was, a, but he was playing video games, right? Because he was playing the video games, in a way, he was kind of like a role model to me. Because I didn't have a, like I said, I didn't have a father. But he was kind of like a role model, especially for a middle school kid. I mean, I mean, adults would probably say, "Oh man, that's not a very good role model," and they're kind of right. But um, but I'd see him pray before he ate. You wouldn't say the Lord's name in vain. And because of that, because of where he was, his status or whatever, whatever you want to call it, because he was like this big YouTuber, right? I was like, man, I want to be like that. I want, I don't want to say the Lord's name in vain. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to pray before I eat. I want, I'm, I want to pray and call God my father since I don't have one, right? But I wouldn't have thought that. If it was just some guy at church saying to do that. He, he was kind of a role model because of that. Which made me, give me, gave me the desire to be like him. So because I wanted to be like him, I stopped saying the Lord's name in vain. I tried to stop swearing because he didn't swear either. And I just tried to do all these things, right? To try to be a better Christian. And I just think if someone, especially if, if young kids... I mean, I, I've, or teenagers, I've seen, you know, I've, it's, I've seen it, man. Especially nowadays, because there's so many teenagers, so many divorces, man. There's no, there's rarely any marriages anymore, man. It's just disgusting. It's horrible. I'm talking about me personally and my experiences with other teenagers, right? When they see a role model, they want to be like them. If they were to see a role model who prays the rosary and who talks about Catholic faith, right? Would it have the same effect? I think so. One of my viewers started praying the rosary. Told me to start praying the rosary. He started praying the rosary because I was praying the rosary. And when I started making rosaries, I made one for him. But you wouldn't have started praying the rosary. It's because this person was there for my last channel, right? And they saw the video games and stuff. But then when I made my new channel, they came over saw me playing more video games, but then started promoting the rosary. I was a gamer playing, playing on YouTube, playing these video games. And now he's promoting the rosary. I want to do that. 
So I made this person a rosary and they pray the rosary. I think they're praying with their family too. I'm still going on my faith journey, man. It's not over. You know, life is kind of crazy, man. I'm only 20. 20 is old, man. 20 is old. I don't want to be 20. <laughs> but, um, you know, my mom, to everyone who asks her about her faith journey, people ask about it. She says this. The same thing. She said, I dedicated my three children to the Blessed Mother. And it was my children who brought me back. So I was wondering when the day would come when I'd cry on the, on the channel. Anyway, thank you guys again for 500, okay? It's half a thousand. We can get a thousand, man. We can do it. I need your guys' help, though. Thank you guys again so much, okay? Um, I'm still making rosaries and stuff if you want one uh, on Etsy. The link's in the description on all my videos. And I also still have, you can still get this mug. I mean, I haven't been getting very many sales recently. Um, probably because I haven't been promoting it and stuff. I actually haven't been very good at making videos and, and also because I didn't even post yet. You know, I didn't even post much at all recently. So, so we'll just have to, just have to see how, what the future holds, right? Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for five. Hundred. Five hundred. I owe it all. It's not even me. Completely. The Blessed Mother. And Jesus. The reason I have the computer to even make it is because of Jesus. I said a prayer. I said, Lord. I was trying to sell these things, right? And I said, Lord, if, if, if the only way. And I, and, it, and I found a good deal. And I said, the only way I can get it is if these two things sell. But if they don't sell, it's not your will, I won't get it. Sure, like literally minutes after I said it, they both sold, man. I gotta pick up the pace though. I gotta make more. I gotta, I gotta keep, I gotta keep going, man. But thank you for watching, especially if you watch to the end. If you watch to the end, you're, you're the, you're the, you're the best, man. It means so much if you just watch to the end. So we're still a really small channel. Not very many people watch to the end. So if you're watching to the end, you're... But that was my faith journey, roughly. We'll see you guys in the next video. 500.